Thank you. Thank you very much. So my name is Lorenzo Rosnati. I am a PhD student from Politecnico di Milano. And this activity has been carried out in cooperation with the University of Upper Austria, with our colleague, uh, Professor Seng. It's an, uh, uh, an assessment, a fatigue assessment of um, an aluminum bracket produced by laser powder bed fusion with the um, large focus on the NDI techniques to be applied. The uh, topic of the study is in fact the uh, topology optimized the general electric uh, jet engine bracket that you can see here in the figure. It has been printed in ANSI 10 MG and uh, uh, during the testing it has experienced an unexpected failure at uh, more or less 30% of the life at which it was designed for. Uh, the testing has produced this output and uh, we had to basically analyze more in depth the cause of the failure as well as the possible uh, actions to improve this kind of design. And uh, the analysis has, uh, is consisting of uh, the analysis of H, uh, high cycle fatigue specimens as well as the photographies and the CT scans of the component. And uh, finally, a uh, probabilistic assessment that we have carried out with ProPhase software. And uh, in the end, we will see some new developments on the topic. So basically this, uh, this bracket has been manufactured in LPBF on an EOS M400 machine. And uh, um, it has been uh, tested as well as scanned before the testing. The um, finite element analysis of the system has shown that we have basically two most critical areas. One in the vicinity of the lug where there is the of applied tension and one on the uh, side surface of the bracket itself. It has been tested on um, with a load ratio of 0.1, so intention, and uh, uh, some uh, preliminary analysis for fatigue life have been carried out with FEMFAT that have produced the result of 224,000 cycles. As I said, the real life was about one third, so 80,000 cycles. Um, to give a more in-depth look at the problem, we have carried out some studies on the high cycle fatigue tests that were carried out. The um, specimen were manufactured together with the component. They were um, sandblasted. They were tested at a load ratio uh, 0.1 on a uniaxial MTS hydraulic machine. Uh, here you can see the results in terms of stress amplitude versus number of cycle to failure. We have done also some XRD measurements for the residual stresses. And here we can, it's a, on the shot pin surface, we can see the results which are pretty much consistent with the, on the four sides of the specimen. And uh, a first answer can be given in terms of a life, life prediction according to these results. And uh, considering the failed area of the lug, here, we have seen a stress uh, range from the finite element analysis of 212 MPA, which roughly corresponds to a 50% failure probability at 70,000 cycles. It decreases once we have a look at the mu minus two sigma SN curve. Uh, to, uh, to go more in depth in the analysis, we have, uh, we have had a look at the fracture surfaces from these specimens as well as the CT scans from the specimens. And uh, they have been analyzed using the Nasgur propagation equation on uh, uh, both sides. The fracture surfaces have shown basically two types of defects. We can have embedded defects near the vicinity of the surface and surface features like we see on the corner of this picture. The CT scan has been carried out with a voxel size of 10 micrometers. And here we can see the reconstruction of the analysis in the fractured area on a distance of one millimeter uh, across the, the, the failure. 
And uh, the simulation were carried out, as I said, using the software NASGRO with these two crack models. So the surface model and the embedded type. The addition of residual stress is considered. And uh, um, what I am presenting here are the results of uh, the, let's say, two most representative specimens, number 16 and number 20. They are representative as the number 16 has failed at the surface, which is a defect that could not be seen by XCT. And in fact, the Propagation from the fracture surface defect of 38,000 cycles is quite consistent with the experimental life, while the XCT scans of the three largest defects has shown larger lives. For the specimen number 20, instead, which you can see on the right hand side of the slide, the most critical defect is the letter A and has shown a uh, um, uh, a final results in terms of fracture surface, which is uh, definitely lower than the experimental life of 73,000 cycles, while the XCT uh, exceeds this kind of measurement. The uh, same approach has been considered also for the component. Here we can see the fracture surface near the lug. So here we have the machine, the surface, where there is the, where the pin for the tension is uh, inserted. And we can we could detect a fractured origin from a defect with a square root of area of 122 micrometers highlighted in the picture. The XCT scan of the part was also available. So we tried to perform the same uh, analysis using NASGRO software. And also in this case, we have seen some similar results with, this, with respect to the specimens. In fact, from the analysis of the of the CT scans, here you can see the profile of the, the fractured area. By isolating the bottom part and by performing an analysis on the most detrimental defects, which are uh, not, um, they could be the largest, but in this case we can see that we will see that the, the fractured origin as the third largest defects. By performing the NASGRO propagation, we have seen that the fracture surface leads to a failure in 54,000 cycles, which is a bit lower than the experimental uh, prediction, the experimental results, sorry. While the XCT data, A to C, show um, a very large difference as in fact, the defect A is uh, quite far from the most stressed area, while the specimen C, which is the one of the fracture surface, um, has experienced a very close number of cycle to failure as the one uh, depicted from the SEM imaging. And uh, also the square root of area is quite consistent. Uh, we have to remind that uh, the fracture, the XCT scan was carried out with a uh, um, uh, a voxel size of 35 micrometers due to the dimension of the part. So the third step of the analysis was the use of the ProFace software, which is a software uh, patented by Polimi. It uh, allows the um, to perform a probabilistic fatigue assessment of an additive manufactured component by exploiting the knowledge of mainly three things. We need to know about the applied stress to a part. We need to know the material model. So the, for instance, the NASGRO uh, coefficients in order to obtain the Delta K threshold or the uh, height diagram. We need to know about uh, all this in order to compute the Kitagawa diagram as well as with the Eladad uh, parameter. And we also need to know about the defect population in the volume of the component and also in the surface, on the surface of the component. By matching these three characteristics, we can have as an output the component failure probability by means of the weakest link approach. 
This process has been already validated with the European Space Agency on two materials, Alcitan-MG and Titanium-64 components. For this case, we have exploited the XCT scan of the specimens in order to obtain the defect distribution on the volume. And for this reason, we could uh, apply this knowledge on, uh, with the Perface software in order to get the, est the estimated failure probability as function of the number of cycles. And here we can see that the output of the software is more or less reliable as the 80,000 cycles process the failure probability results at approximately a value of 0.5. So one out of two, one out of two should fail at this number of cycles. And the 50% failure probability was slightly lower at 63,000 cycles. So uh, the Perface software has confirmed what uh, the experimental evidence has shown, while the NASGRO propagation equation was uh, um, a bit underestimating the number of cycle to failure as uh, the nucleation part is not well represented. Another step is the creation of critical defect maps. They can be obtained from the finite element component, finite element model, by means of uh, mm, an abacus uh, manipulation via Python in order to uh, plot the critical defect size on the component itself. With the Perfect software, we could um, manage to see what was the acceptability map on the failed region. And if we have a look at the XCT scan combined with this kind of map, we can see that the region beneath the surface of the component has produced uh, some, um, some uh, excesses with respect to the, um, the map of the uh, acceptable defect for 80,000 cycles in these cases. So a bit, bit larger than 50% um, of failure probability. This approach is part of uh, an ongoing project with the European Space Agency that uh, plans to create uh, maps for the acceptability of defects, as we have seen, using the interaction with uh, online monitoring and XCT scans a priori in order to determine if a component can be exploited for uh, space applications or if it's needed at the rating. Basically, we start from the same inputs, so a fatigue model of the component. Here we have the two um, uh, components that will be tested for this project. And uh, the goal is to um, address the output on XCT scans and uh, uh, online monitoring as soon as we have the, um, the finite element model and these kind of information. Uh, the project is currently ongoing with also some other, uh, mother, uh, some other companies like MTC, BMIT, Thales France, and Leonardo. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Is there any question from you, Ozan? Please. I don't know if you can answer about the design of the component itself. Because I noticed it like it's kind of it's a group of sheets welded together somehow. And it's not like the typical AM components with the like uh, bar inspired shape. Is there any particular reason for that? The design of the component came from basically a race for the uh, topology optimization of this kind of bracket. It was uh, um, a, a model that had, has won this competition and uh, it was chosen in order to, um, to try the feasibility with additive manufacturing using Alcetan MG. So it's, uh, it's not done by us. It was uh, taken as, as it was and it has been printed as well as tested and uh, scanned for this reason. Thank you. You're welcome.